What is going on, guys? Joey Franzo here with Flex Training Systems. It is the day before Avengers Endgame comes out. I haven't talked to you guys in a minute, so I wanted to make a video. I've had a ridiculously busy week. Just uh, We just got back from Collegiates. I'm going to talk about that. Um, talk about Endgame. I'm going to talk about some things that uh, kind of came up and that were brought up uh, over the weekend, some things that I noticed, some things that I've seen, um, you know, and just a bunch of other random stuff, so, yeah, man, um, psh, collegiates, uh, it was great, I got to shake a lot of hands, actually, it was a weird scenario, I did a poll on my team page, asking how many people were gonna do it many months out, I had like 10, 11 people, and I'm like, alright, that's a good amount of people, I guess I gotta show up, um, then California announced their state meet, and everybody fucking everybody pulled out and signed up for that one. It's close. I mean, not everybody, but I mean, I'm in Cali, so a lot of my guys are from Cali, um, and uh, it's closer. It's it's a nice venue. It's gonna be at the Anaheim Convention Center. Jonathan Kago is gonna total like two thousand. So you know, everybody wants to see some history being made. <laughs> I mean, he might. I'm saying, I'm not saying for sure. I'm saying he might. Um, so you know, a lot of guys want to meet him, and. Uh, you know, so it's understandable. Um, so I ended up having that as many people at this one as I thought. Um, but uh, I believe it was five. We had two guys go perfect. Um, and everybody else went, I believe, seven for nine. Seven for nine. Uh, I think so. So it was great. Uh, I, had a lighter, I had a lighter week. Um, it allowed me to walk around the venue and meet a lot of people and have some conversations and shake some hands. And the, you know, one of the cool things about Collegiate is like, you're always in an environment where, um, you get to meet people in your community. Right. So, I mean, in powerlifting, I like to think I'm, I've made a little bit of a name for myself in the, you know, in the, even in, I guess in the drug free community, I guess you could say. Um, and you know, it's always nice when people come up to you and they congratulate you. Uh, maybe they're not a client, but they watch my videos or I post something online that they appreciate or whatever. Uh, so it was really cool to see that I was a source of inspiration and uh, you know motivation uh, for people. Is that kind of the same thing, inspiration and motivation, right? Maybe a little bit different. Um, but uh, I had I had one guy come up to me in particular who was just losing his shit and. It was very interesting to me that I could have th that kind of effect on someone. Um, but it reminded me that everything that I do, everything that I put out, you know, if you guys go through my channel, I think a lot of you guys will agree. Uh, like, it's not the hardest. I mean, I just rant. I just talk. So it's not very organized. But there, it, there are gems here and there. And to hear people say, hey, in this one, in this one video, um, you said something that I was able to take away from your, your video and apply it to my lifting and it's made me a better lifter and it completely changed the way that I look at lifting, et cetera, et cetera. That's why I do it. That's why I'm making these videos. You know, they're completely free. Anybody can come look to them. It's a way of getting a little bit of me and my essence, right? Without, uh, you know, without, without having to pay for services. Um, although you're not gonna get the full experience, obviously. And there's gonna be a lot of, I, I don't put everything in these videos, but I do try to, form and shape the minds of those that listen to them so that they can have a better experience on the platform and sometimes outside of the platform. Uh, so it was really, I, I felt very appreciated after the weekend. I felt like I was making a difference. I felt like, um, you know, people cared about the things that I said. People cared about uh, the stuff that I was doing, the things I'm trying to do with the team, the limits I'm trying to break, you know what I'm saying? Um, it just felt good. It just felt really, really good to be able to do that. And it's crazy. It's like, you know, I didn't handle 30,000 people like I like I normally do. Like, literally at the state competition, I'm going to have 15 people as of right now. There's some secret people competing that you guys don't know about. Um, but it's, it's, it's at least 15 right now. And, like, I'm not going to be able to walk around and shake hands and talk to people as much. So maybe by – maybe it was, like like, by the fate of the universe because I wasn't, you know, doing – what I'm normally doing and I was able to talk to people. Maybe I said something to someone that could perhaps help them 
you know, in their in their daily life or I was able to make a difference to someone. I had a nice conversation with the guy. Um, I believe his name was Stone, something Stone. I don't know my I think I remember his last name, Stone. And it was a great it was a great conversation. And, you know, uh, you know, those are those are the kind of things that you hope to to experience when you're at these events. So, uh, I mean, if you can, of course, but it was nice. So it was a nice little change of scenery for me. You know, my lifters competing is kind of autopilot at this point. It's very, it's very routine. Uh, I go to these meets kind of just to warm up, just to sharpen the sharpen the blade, make sure that I'm on point. We got worlds coming up. Then we got the big state meet. Then I'm chilling for a little bit, uh, and then it's time for nationals. And then I'm fucking hibernating until I'm gonna play Pokemon and hibernate because a new one drops then, literally until the new year. So, um. Shit, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, but yeah, man. And and I noticed a lot of you guys, a lot of guys were like, they're students, maybe they can't afford something. You know, I just would like to refer you guys to the um, Strength and Muscle Pyramid by Dr. Eric Helms. It's got everything in there. If you know that stuff, it's going to make your path to making gains 10,000 times easier as, as opposed to like just searching the internet and trying to find, you know, all this scattered information. But, um, but yeah, so nice little plug, put that down below, but I wouldn't share that if I didn't really truly believe in it. Uh, PR breaker code flex 10, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so that was great. Um, it's always great to see my people, you know, these events are always cool cause you get to, uh, you get to meet people that you talk to often. Uh, it's just different experience in person. Um, it just kind of reminds us that we are people still, <laughs> it's not just Instagram and YouTube and stuff like that. So, um, what did I, what was I going to say? The keys, the keys, you guys want some keys. Yeah. So what is going on with these guys that are like six feet, you know, cutting six, one, six, two, six, three, cutting the like 93s, you know what I mean? Like stuff like that. I understand they're weaker and they don't have enough, uh, or they're, they're younger. They don't have enough muscle on them yet. Um, and usually with youth comes some, like, you're not as strong, obviously. But um, I just want to see more people not worry about cutting weight unless they're going to be hyper-competitive in whatever it is that they're doing. I understand that it's collegiate, so the standards are going to be a little bit lower. And you might be able to get away with uh, uh, a little bit, you know. I mean, you, cutting might be important for you in that situation, but... Um, it's just like, man, when you don't cut weight and you just compete, you're going to experience powerlifting in a way that I don't even, like, I don't even think people know what that's like. You know what I mean? A lot of people don't even know what that's like because they just always cut. So they think of the anxiety and the stress and the shit that they need to deal with before they compete. But fear, at the same time, that fear of cutting comes from just inexperience like you don't understand how it works so you don't know what to expect so you're like literally how many of you guys have been like two pounds overweight like the day before and you're fucking freaking out there's absolutely no reason for that it doesn't make any sense right one that's anybody can lose that weight uh two hold on one second as i pick my cat up because he keeps fucking hitting me in the feet um but yeah, uh, don't cut. You know, if you if you're not competitive, it's not a bad thing, dude. Just worry about you and and have fun with it. Remember, we got into this to have fun. Um, and then once you get strong enough and you're ready to cut, then you can cut. You can find a coach. You can start doing all that stuff. But it's just like, way too many people, way too many red lights. You know, um, just just missing. You should not be missing opener squats or having really really tough last warm ups and things like that. So. Um, you know, it's, it was just unfortunate to see a lot of that stuff. I mean, I didn't, I don't even think I had anyone really cut much. Um, but, but there's something about cutting, like, even if it's your first time and you know what you're doing, if, if you do everything right, like for whatever reason, some, there's something's off, you know, it's, it's just the first time, something about the first time doing it mentally, the pieces are not all there. And, you know, it just doesn't. It's obviously not going to be as good as if you've done it a million times. So, yeah. In summary, don't cut if you absolutely – like, if you don't need to, then just don't cut. There's literally no point. Um, what else? 
Yeah, man, just staying in the pocket. The, the, what I like the term staying in the pocket because it's going to be so relevant. It's going to be so relevant forever. Um, and, uh, you know, it's starting to catch fire. People are starting to say it all over the place. Um, and it's just like, take what you have, man. That's literally all it is. It's just take what you have on the day, in the gym, on the platform. You don't need to try to YOLO something. Like, most of the time, I would say, like, 8 out of 10 times when someone just fucking sends it on a third deadlift, like, they're not going to get it, you know? It's like you're defeated before you even get into it. So, I don't understand. I don't understand it. I guess it's like a, you know, you just want to try it. But it's like, if your training should dictate whether or not you have it. You shouldn't be guessing on me day, basically. Um, I, I understand like the idea of going for it and just to kind of experience that, but it's just like, you should know, you know what I mean? You should know it should be well within your, well within your range, uh, of capability. Um, nerves, man. Some of the, some guys, it, one of my guys was super nervous. He had done many meets with me before, but there's something about collegiates. He was so damn nervous. He was just sweating, shaking. It was crazy. Um, and I understand it's one of those things. This is the thing about me when it with mentality, right? I can tell you what to do and what to expect, but unless you go through it, for some people, it's just not gonna work. Like they gotta, they have to, they have to go through it. They have to experience that stress. They have to see those lights. They have to see those judges and all the crowd and all that stuff. And they have to go through it get their nerves out a couple times and then, you know, they evolve from it. They gain that experience and then they're good to go. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it, it's crazy. It's just, it's just one of those things, man. It's like, it's like telling someone two plus two is four, but they have to experience it in the real world to really understand it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that was a shit analogy, but I'm very sleep deprived at the moment. Uh, <laughs> aside from that, Shit, I'll share something with you guys. Nerves. Um, when it comes to powerlifting in this profession, I'm extremely confident in what I do. I know I have foresight. I know what to expect. I know what I need to do to get people to where they want to go. I know what to worry about, what not to worry about, this and that, right? But when it comes to, like, for example, the health of a loved one, right? I recently had an experience with a loved one where they had to get surgery. And I was very, sh I was like a little shaken up about it because... One, my family situation is very small, so like each member is worth like a lot to me. It's not like I have a gigantic family. Um, not that a big family means anyone's worth any less. It's just like, you know, I put everything into one person, and then if anything were to happen to them, you know, you're kind of, it's going to fuck you up no matter who you are. Um, so, so I experienced that recently, and, and I just did a bunch of mental exercises to kind of like cope with it, and... Um, which is just talking to myself basically and thinking logically. Let's over, you want to drown your emotion. You want to drown your impulses and your instincts. Like when it comes to your impracticality, your impractical primitive emotions, you want to drown them with just logic and reason. You want to just continuously drown them. Damn, that's so good. I'm going to write it down somewhere. You want to continuously just drown, drown out that irrational, it's almost toxic uh, feelings and emotions with just logic and reason, and eventually it'll seep through, and then you'll sleep on it. You'll start to see, you'll start to think clearly. Everything's gonna be okay, you know. Maybe, maybe it truly is hit or miss. It truly is hit or miss. You don't have control over the situation. Oftentimes, you know, we all have loved ones. They get older. Things happen. Sometimes we can't control the situation as well as we want to. Um, and it sucks not being in control. It sucks not knowing. But you got to have hope. I used to think hope was a waste of time. And it is for the most part. I mean, you know, hoping isn't going to make your dreams come true. You have to go out and do it. But in some situations where you don't have control, I think hope is something that can help you get through that situation. And and make it out and it turns out everything worked out for the situation i'm talking about everything worked out everyone's okay for now and um it, it reminded me not that i need to be reminded it reminded me that i'm human it reminded me that it, it, tomorrow's not promised and that we need to take every day 
and I live it to the fullest. That's why when you guys come to my IG, you come here. I'm ha I'm trying to be generally happy person um, because I am. I'm, you know, I want to spread that good energy and I want people to take away. I want people to take that. I want people to come here and take that into their life and have a better day because of it. Um, you know what I mean? So uh, even if we talk about uncomfortable topics, you know, it's it should still help you get better in some way. So um shit what else are i gonna talk about yeah i mean <laughs> end games tomorrow <laughs> um i'm ready you guys let me know how ready you are in the comments let me know if you're going what day you're going hashtag end day end game what the hell am i saying hashtag end game in the comments below uh if you post a spoiler i will probably erase you from uh you and that half of the universe i'll just you know use my gauntlet take you out me you know and it's as if you never happened <laughs> now nah, please please don't spoil the end game right shout out to the russos for starting that whole movement right um i remember when star wars came out everybody was saying who died which kind of fucked it up but i wasn't really as invested in that movie as i am in this one so it didn't really bother me um but yeah, guys, end game tomorrow. Game of Thrones this weekend. Go watch One Punch Man. Uh, there's three episodes out of season two. Uh, shit, what am I forgetting? I don't even know. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Take something away from it. Extremely busy over here at Flex Training Systems. Um, working on expanding the business. Um, I am so proud of myself because I've actually been like putting time aside to get through all of my emails. And uh, if you haven't, I'm pretty sure everyone's heard from me. Um even though I had to go back like four pages and it was not easy, but yeah, uh, we're just doing thing, doing, doing big things over here, knocking things out left and right. Um, she, but yeah, guys have a good weekend. Uh, go watch Endgame. Tell me what you thought. Shoot me a DM. You know, how hyped were you? Did you cry? I want to hear it all. I want to hear everything. Yeah, man, that's it. Stay safe, everyone. Tell a loved one you love them, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.